Krishna Krishna Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna ಜಯನತಲೀಲಪ್ರಭುಪಾರಕೀಜಾಯಿಸ್ಕಾನ್ಮಿಲ್ತನ್ಯತ್ಸಾರಿಸ್ಕಾನ್ಸ್ಕ
So uh, Duryodhan was uh, doing that. Being a demoniac person, he was only interested in satisfying his own senses. So uh, there was to be a battle. So Arjuna, as he stood there, he's, um, he's lamenting to Lord Krishna what he's seeing on the other side, all, all these relatives. And now Krishna is speaking. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Narayanam namaskritim nadam chayvam narotamam devim saraswatim vyasam tato jayam odirayat. So, actually it's the second shloka, not the first. The first shloka is Sanjaya speaking. He's telling Maharaj Dhritarashtra what he can see on the battlefield. As we probably all know, Srila Vyasadev gave um, Sanjaya, the ability to see from afar. So they were sitting in the kingdom in Hastinapur. So Hastinapur, if we were you know a little bit of ge geography of India, is uh, in Del it's Delhi, New Delhi, and Kurukshetra is like two hours away by car. So by chariot, it was probably three hours away. <laughs> Carrots didn't move as fast as the cars. So. But Sanjaya was able to see through spiritual vision that was, that was given to him by Srila Vyasadev temporarily. He was able to see everything that was going on on the battlefield. He was able to see each person. And he was able to hear every person's conversation. And he was able to relay that message back to uh, the Tarashtra. So just imagine how powerful that is, right? If you're able to, in this room, we're, we're in close proximity of everyone, if you can, so we can see, obviously, because we're all in the same room, but if you can hear, if two people are in the back speaking softly or in the next room speaking softly, just imagine if you're able to hear what they're saying. This is called bionic um, hearing. Right, and so anyone who if someone is able to do that, that person is considered to be very powerful. So the supreme personality of Godhead, Lord Sri Krishna, he is able to see and hear every living entity, not just in this city or on this continent or on this planet, but every single planet in this universe and every single universe in his creation, including everyone that is living in the spiritual world. So that is powerful. And that is Bhagavan. This is the Supreme Personality of God. So Srila Prabhupada will talk about who Bhagavan is in, in his purport. So chapter, uh, sorry, text 2. Chapter 2 is entitled, Contents of the Gita Summarized. Shri Bhagavan Uvacha Kutastva kashmalam idam visham tamupashtitam anarya jushtam ashvargyam akirti karna karam arjuna. The translation, or maybe I should give the word for word and then I'll give the translation. Shri Bhagavan Vacha, the Supreme Personality of Godhead said, Kuta, therefore, Twa, unto you, Shamalam, dirtiness, Idam, this lamentation, Vishame, in this hour of crisis, Samupashtitam, arrived, Anarya, persons who do not know the value of life, Jushtam, Practiced by Ashvargyam, 
which does not lead to higher planets. Akirti infamy, karam, the cause of, Arjuna, O Arjun. The supreme translation, the supreme personality of God had said, please repeat. The supreme person. My dear Arjuna, how have these impurities come upon you? They are not at all befitting a man who knows the value of life. They lead not to higher planets but the infamy. Purport by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Srila Prabhupada. Srila Prabhupada ki jai. Krishna is the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Sorry, Krishna and the Supreme Personality of Godhead are identical. Therefore, Lord Krishna is referred to as Bhagwan throughout the Gita. Bhagwan is the ultimate in the absolute truth. The absolute truth is realized in three phases. Anyone knows those three phases? Hmm? Yes. Brahman, Paramatma, and Bhagwan. So Brahman is the or the impersonal all pervasive spirit. Paramatma is the local aspect of the Supreme within the heart of all living entities. And Bhagawan, or the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Lord Krishna. In the Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 1, Chapter 2, Shloka number 11, this conception of the Absolute Truth is explained thus. Vedanti tat tat vidvash tatvam yajnanam avyayam brahmetmi paramatmeti bhagavan iti shabdare. The absolute truth is realized in three phases of understanding by the knower of the absolute truth, and all of them are identical. Such phases of the absolute truth are expressed as bhagavan paramatma. Sorry. Brahman, Paramatma, and Bhagavan. These three divine aspects can be explained by the example of the sun, which also has three different aspects, namely the sunshine, the sun surface, and the sun planet itself. One who studies the sunshine only is a preliminary student. One who understands the sun surface is further advanced. And one who can enter into the sun planet is the highest. Ordinary students who are satisfied by simply understanding the sunshine, its universal pervasiveness, and the glaring effulgence of its impersonal nature may be compared to those who can realize only the Brahman feature of the absolute truth. The student who has advanced still further can, not, can know the sun disk, which is compared to knowledge of the Paramatma feature of the Absolute Truth. And the student who can enter into the heart of the sun planet is compared to those who realize the personal features of the Supreme Absolute Truth. Therefore, Bhaktas or the Transcendentalists who are realized in the Bhagavan feature of the Absolute Truth are the topmost transcendental, transcendentalists. Although all students who are engaged in the study of the Absolute Truth are engaged in the same subject matter, the sunshine, the sun disk, and the inner affairs of the sun planet cannot be compared from one another, sorry, cannot be separated from one another, and yet the students of the three different phases are not in the same category. Does anyone know who those three transcendentalists are? 
So we have jnanis, yogis and bhaktas. The Sanskrit word Bhagavan is explained by the, author the great authority Parashara Muni, the father of Srila Vyasadeva. The Supreme Personality of Godhead possesses all riches, all strength, all fame, all beauty, all knowledge, and all renunciation is called Bhagavan. <clears throat> there are many persons who are very rich, very powerful, very beautiful, very famous, very learned, and very much detached. But no one can claim that they possess all riches, all strength, etc. Entirely. Only Krishna can claim this because he is the Supreme Personality of Godhead. No living entity, including Brahma, Lord Shiva, or Narayan, can possess opulences as full as Krishna. And so we have a book here called The Nectar of Devotion, hopefully in the shelf somewhere. If you get a chance, you read that book, study that book. It's called Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu. And in that book, it explains the qualities of the Supreme Personality of God, or Krishna. And there are 64 qualities. And six qualities are th that I mentioned that we read earlier are only possessed in Lord Krishna himself. So Lord Narayan, Lord Vishnu, Lord Vishnu, etc., they have all these qualities that Krishna also possessed, but they don't have them fully. Like Lord Vishnu, for example, it, it explains in the nectar in the in the Vedas and specifically in the Srimad Bhagavatam that he possesses 94% of these qualities, not a hundred. Right? Those hundred percent are only reserved for the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Lord Sri Krishna. Therefore, it is concluded in the Brahma Samhita by Lord Brahma himself that Lord Krishna is the Supreme Personality of Godhead. No one is equal to or above him. He is the primeval Lord or Bhagwan, known as Govinda. And he is the supreme cause of all causes. Does anyone know that first verse of the nectar? Yes. Ishwaraha Paramaha Krishna Satchirananda Vigraha Anadir Adir Govinda Sarva Karana Karanam. So the meaning of that shloka is there are many personalities. This, is, this shloka is written by Lord Brahma. There are many personalities possessing the qualities of Bhagwan, But Krishna is the supreme because none can excel him. He is the supreme person and his body is eternal, full of knowledge and bliss. Satchir Ananda Vigraha, his entire form. He is the primeval Lord, Govinda. And, and the cause of all causes. And this is from Brahma Samhita, chapter 5, shloka number 1. I mentioned the first verse because uh, Brahma Samhita was lost. And when Maha, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu appeared a little over 500 years ago, and he traveled, he traveled India, or when he traveled down to the south, southern point of India, at one temple, I forget, I think it was Sri Rangam, he found a portion of the Brahma Samhita. And the portion that he's found was starting in chapter 5. <laughs> so uh, the very first shloka of chapter 5 was Ishwara Parama Krishna Satchirananda Vigraha Anadir Adir Govinda Sarva Ardana Karana. In the Bhagavatam, also, there are a list of many incarnations of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. But Krishna is described as the original personality of Godhead, from whom many, many incarnations and personalities of Godhead expand. So anyone, if you get a chance and you look at that chart, that Goloka chart, you can get a good understanding of the different um, uh, departments 
of the spiritual world and and the material world as well. So in the Srimad Bhagavatam, uh, Canto 1, Chapter 3, Shloka number 28, Ete Chasham, Ete Chasha, Kala Pumsha, Krishna te, to Bhagavan Swayam, Indriyari Vyakulam Lokam, Mridhyayanti Yoge Yoge. And the translation is, All of the lists of incarnations of Godhead submitted herewith are either plenary portions or parts of plenary por expansions of the Supreme Godhead, Shri Krishna, the, who is the Supreme Personality of Godhead Himself. Therefore, Krishna is the original Supreme Personality of Godhead, the Absolute Truth, the source of both the Super Soul and the Impersonal Brahman. In the presence of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Arjuna's lamentation for his kinsman is certainly unbecoming. And therefore, Krishna expressed his surprise with the word kuttaha, which means where from. So where is this, where is this inferior, inferiority coming from? As we know, um, Krishna is the Supreme Lord. We've heard of Nara Narayan Rishi. So Narayan is Krishna and Nara is Arjuna. They're always together. So Arjuna is a very great personality and Krishna was very surprised that he was lamenting like this. Right? Such impurities were never expected from a person belonging to the civilized class of men known as Aryans. The word Aryan is applicable to persons who know the value of life and have a civilization based on spiritual realization. Persons who are led by the material conception of life do not know that the aim of life is realization of the absolute truth, Vishnu or Bhagavan, and they are captivated by the external features of the material world, and therefore they do not know what liberation is. Persons who have no knowledge of liberation from material bondage are called non-Aryans. Although Arjuna was a Kshatriya, he was deviating from his prescribed duties of Declining to fight, or sorry, by declining to fight. This act of cowardice is described as befitting the non Aryans. Such deviation from duty does not help one in the progress of spiritual life, nor does it even give one the opportunity to become famous in this world. Lord Krishna did not approve of the so-called compassion of Arjun for his kinsmen. O Magyana Timirandasya, Gyanan Jana Shalakaya, Chakshurun Milite Myena, Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha. I was born in the darkness of ignorance, and my spiritual master opened my eyes with the torch of knowledge. I offer my respectful obeisances unto him. Shri Bhagavan Uvacha. The Supreme Personality of God had said, My dear Arjun, how have these impurities come upon you? They are not at all befitting a man who knows the value of life. They lead not to higher planets, but to infamy. The mic is ready to go to sleep. Hare Krishna. We'll do it like this.
So I mentioned this chart here. So I want to take you on a little journey. Everyone ready for a journey? So let's imagine that we have a screen here and there's a projector over there and it's projecting an image on the screen. And the image is a little circle, right? So now we ask the projector operator to increase the, uh, the um, um, or decrease the magnification. So we decrease the magnification, the circle will start to get bigger, right? It gets bigger and bigger until it falls off the screen. We can no longer see the circle, right? So this is the spiritual world. We know it exists, but we don't know how big it is. We don't know how big the operator has made that circle. But now you can't see it on the screen any longer. It's fallen off the screen. So the spiritual world is described as ever expanding. Srila Prabhupada described it as ever expanding. No matter how far one was to travel, they could never find the end of it because it is so massive. And at the top of the spiritual world, there's a beautiful lotus flower. We see it there. <coughs> and on that, this is a topical view of the flower. But the flower is there, and, on, and that flower is a planet. And that planet is called Goloka Vrindavan. What does Goloka mean? Go Loka. Go means senses. Go has more than one meaning. In this particular context, it has a different meaning. What does Go mean? What's Krishna's favorite? Go Loka, the home, the planet of cows. So on Golo, to show the supremacy or the wonderful uh, variegatedness of the Lord's creation, on Goloka Vrindavan, there are many cows. And the, they have polka dot cows. Has anyone seen a polka dot cow? Polka dot cows, blue cows, green cows, pink cows, yellow cows. We have the standard black and white cows and brown cows. But every color that you can imagine, and those that you can't even imagine, they exist in Goloka Vrindavan. And all of these cows are liberated, liberated entities, liberated uh, living beings that assume the form of a cow or a grain of salt a grain of sand, sorry, or a bumblebee, or a tree, or grass. Why? Does anyone know why they've done this? Yes, for the pleasure of Lord Krishna. So if you love someone, we try to think, what can I do to please that person? And then when we think when we think of what we can do, we then do it. So these liberated living entities that that reside on Goloka Vrindavan, they assume many different forms for the pleasure of Lord Krishna. Now one of Lord Krishna's favorite thing to do is to swing on a swing, a Julan. So every year. We have a period that's called Julan Yatra, and for a period it's coming up uh, sometime in August. And so maybe it's not done so much here, but maybe on a Sunday. But if you go to the Toronto Temple, um, the 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 Lord is put on a swing at 7 a.m. and all the devotees get a chance to swing the Lord on the swing, because that's what he loves to do. He loves to be swung by his devotees. So uh, Lord Krishna and Srimati Radharani, they sit on the swing, and every devotee who is present gets a chance to come and pull the rope and swing them. So in Goloka Vrindavan, 
animate, inanimate objects are animate. Everything in the spiritual world is animate. There's no such, like we would say this microphone is inanimate, which means it doesn't have life, right? But everything in the spiritual world possesses life. Everything is aware. Everyone is aware. So some wonderful devotees get a chance to take the form of a swing so that Lord Krishna can sit on them and be swung. So we understand that um, there, are two, there are two categories of living entities like us, the jivas. There are two categories. Anyone know what those two categories are? Okay, what's the Sanskrit word for liberated entity? So there's nitya siddhas. Nitya means eternally. Siddhas means liberated. And nitya bhadas, those who are eternally conditioned. So Krishna is so kind that he creates a material world on the bottom there for all the nitya bhadas. And here we are. <laughs> but also, what does he give us? If we want to go, we want to travel from the bottom to the top, how do we get there? Yeah, how? What's the means of getting there? Yeah, there's one specific thing that we can do, and that Srila Prabhupada came to taught us, teach us. Yeah. One specific thing. Yes. And so there are 12 Mahajans in this universe. He provides. So he sends three things. There are three spiritual authorities. Anyone know who they are? I had one. I'll give you a hint. The first one starts with a G. Guru. Next one starts with an S. Yes, Guru, Sadhu, and Shastra. So Guru, Sadhu, and Shastra are there to help us to navigate this material world and travel up to the spiritual world. And in this universe, there are 12 Mahajans. One of them is Narad Muni. And he taught us a famous verse that everyone knows. He says, if one wants to go to the spiritual world, they need to do Hari Kirtan. Hari Nam, Hari, he did it three times. You know, we have little children, or we were once little children, and our parents ask us to do something, and okay. And then again, okay. You know, it kind of like goes in one ear and out the next. So sometimes you have to keep asking them finally, okay, I'll get it out, right? So we are like that. We're like little children. And Narad Muni is telling us, Hari Ranama, Hari Ranama, Hari Ranama, Kalo Nasteva. There's no other way. There's no other way. There's no other way. So the only way, Kali Yuga, the Lord made it so simple. Each Yuga, we know we have four Yugas, Sat, Treta, Dwapar, and Kali. In Sati Yuga, the the process of exiting this material world to go to the spiritual world is what meditation so we hear of sadhus who sit for ten thousand years or whatever underwater or somewhere sitting on flaming uh, um, embers or whatever they're they're performing austerities right We've heard that austerity is the wealth of the Brahman. So if we can perform austerities, it's one way of getting closer to the Lord. So in Satya Yuga, the Yuga Dharma is meditation. So you sit in silent meditation and you concentrate, keep your head, neck and back erect and concentrate on the tip of your nose. Elish knows all this. He did many dramas in, in this. So this, Krishna mentioned this in the Bhagavad Gita, how one sits to meditate. So this was the method. But everyone lived for 100,000 years, and they've got thousands of years to meditate without interruption. 
And what happens if you get interrupted? There was one great sage, and he heard he heard the bangles of Maya Devi, and what happened to him? Everything went to naught. Vishwamitra Muni. So those stories are not there for us to laugh or to make fun. Those stories are there for us to learn. That if such great personalities who had the ability to see the Supreme Lord face to face could fall from his devotional service in such a way, who are we? Right? So this is something we should think about. Don't just read it or hear about it and okay, that was him, you know. Lord Brahma, who was the first living entity in this universe, was given a job to create. And then he created all kinds of and he created a very beautiful woman, his daughter, and he became infatuated. And he had to give up this body. Right? Lord Indra, the king of all the devatas. He became infatuated with his guru's wife and he fell down. Right? He lived for a period of time as a pig. He fell from the spiritual. Just imagine. Such a great personality. All the devtas are there, but he's the he's their king. Right? What do you do when the leader comes in? Everybody listens. Everybody pays respect. So all the devatas are paying respect to Lord Indra. And Lord Indra can have such a great fall down from his position. Luckily for him, because he's such a great personality, he was able to regain his kingdom after some time. We're not that fortunate. Again, these, these stories are not there for us to laugh or make fun of or anything like that. They are there. They're teaching they're teaching moments. They're examples for us to contemplate on and figure out what can I do to not fall into that trap, not have that happen to me, right? So, Narad Muni, uh, sorry, so, so the Yuga Dharma for Satya Yuga is meditation. The Yuga Dharma for Treta Yuga is? Not yagyas. We're doing a lot. So we hear uh, the Leela. I was supposed to come here and speak on Ram Naomi and then I got the flu so <laughs> and lost my voice so I couldn't come. But, uh, oh no, sorry. No, it wasn't that. I, there was a funeral I had to visit. I had to go to Florida for a funeral. But I did catch a cold at that time. So, um, so in Ram Leela, Lord Ram was performing an Ashwamedha Yagya. And his horse was traveling all over the world. And while the horse was traveling, the Lord was performing this Yagya. So he had to have millions of gallons of ghee for his Yagya Kund. Now we go to the grocery store and we see a one and a half kg bottle of ghee for $28 and we get a heart attack. Not from the ghee, but from the price of the ghee. <laughs> That's a different story. The heart attack from the ghee is a different story. We're talking about the heart attack from seeing the price of the ghee. Right? So Lord Ramachandra, he had millions of gallons of ghee that they can swaha, 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 that he can put in the fire. So not just ghee, but so many other substances that was required. He had pundits, priests, who could sit in one place. So they were so controlled that when we sit for five minutes, we start moving this side and moving that side, stretching on our legs, standing up. You know, we're, we're always being bothered by this material body. But they had so much um, um, control that they could sit there for days and days on end, hours and hours on end, doing a fire yagya. And if we've ever sat in front of a yagya kund, it gives off lots of heat. 
after when we're sitting there and we're going swaha, you know, and we're trying to move back because the the heat, it's like a wall of heat. And that's a that's a, that's actually a good um, example of what to think about if we uh, ever have to go to that other direction. Or the other direction. Anyone know what I'm talking about? What's at the bottom of the universe? Not not Garbhadakshay Vishnu lying on Anantashesh. Above him. Just above him. So there's a planet. So we here, you know, Rasatala, Talatala, Mahatala, etc. And Patala is the lowest. But between Patala and Lord Vishnu and, and Garbhadakshay Vishnu, there's one planet which is the home of Yamaraj. So in the third canto of Srimad Bhagavatam, uh, Lord Rishabdev, the, the incarnation of the Lord explained to his mother Devahuti about, he, he gave her the um, transmigration of the soul. When, when, from the time of conception, the soul is present. So everybody here is adult when, well, almost everyone, but when, when, you know, when the egg and the, the sperm meets, life begins then. The soul is present in the sperm and the life begins. Whatever that life is, whether it's a human life or an animal life or a plant life or an insect life, but that's when life begins. And we have absolutely no um, business to end that life. Right? Only one person has the, 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 the ability or has the right to end that life, and it's Lord Krishna. No one else has the, the right to end that life. So this is where so um, Lord Kapiladev explained to Mother Devahuti that this is where life begins. And how he describes the child within the womb, and he said certain fortunate living entities can remember their past seven lives. Certain fortunate ones, not everybody, while they're in the womb. But through the process of birth, they lose that ability. They forget. And then he explains how the soul travels. You know, Krishna talks about it. Here in the second chapter, Dehi no Svinyata Dehe. Everyone knows that shloka? Dehi no Svinyata Dehe. Kaumadam Yovanam Jara. Kaumadam Yovanam Jara. Kaumadam is boyhood or children. Yovanam is youth. Jara is old age. Right? So he says, then he explains how a person goes through family life, which is a this fraction from getting to the spiritual world. But some people have to do that. But what a distraction it is and how distracting it is from completing our journey. And if a person dies and Krishna says in the what does Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita about dying, what to do at the time of death? Does anyone know that shloka? Yes. Andakale chamamevan smaran mukva karevaram. So he says, smaran. At the time of death, if one remembers me only, he will come to my transcendental abode. And then in the next shloka, what does he say? The very next shloka after that one. Hmm? I'll give you a, a hint. It starts with the letter Y. He says, Yam Yam Vapi Smanan Vavam Vajate Yan Tekalevanam Tam Tam Evaisha Sikonteya Anathat Bhava Bhavi. He says, Whatever else one remembers at the time of death, that's what he will attain. So in one shloka, he says, Remember me only. And in the next shloka, he says, And whatever else you remember. So anyone know of an example of that in our, in Srimad Bhagavatam? Who? Bharat Maharaj, yes. So Bharat Maharaj, who this earth is named after. So not Bharat, who was the brother of Lord Ramachandra, 
but Bharat Maharaj, who is a king in the Ikshvaku dynasty, coming from 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 Vivaswan, the sun god. So Bharat Maharaj, who was a very uh, righteous king and very learned, he retired from family life and he went to the to the forest, and he at the time of death. He, I'm gonna. I'm not gonna tell you the entire uh, story, but he he remembered a deer he was taking care of, and he had to take the body of a deer. And then in the next life, fortunately for him, he because of the Lord's mercy, he was able to remember who he was in his previous life, and so he would go and he would sit and he would listen to Krishna Katha, and he would eat remnants of food uh, thrown out by sages. And in the following life, he took the birth of uh, Jada Bharat. And only then was he able to exit this material world and go back home, back to Godhead. We might not be so fortunate. So in uh, time is coming short, cutting, coming close to the end. Uh, in Treta Yuga, uh, it's deity worship. So we'll see some an example of that. Just an example. Because <laughs> deity worship is very involved and very elaborate. What we see here is just 0.01% of deity worship. I'll just give you an idea. And then in Kali Yuga, he made it so simple, Hari Kirtan. Just by chanting the names of Lari, Hari, we can go back home, back to Godhead. Not Lari, but Hari. <laughs> so, um, our Mahajan, she, um, Narad Muni has given us, has told us what that shloka is, what what that that what we should be chanting. Srila Prabhupada came here. He was in Vrindavan. He was in already in Vrindavan. He was already in Goloka Vrindavan. But he left and he came here to teach us that. So uh, maybe we should take it seriously. So it's something that we should contemplate. And if we want to go there then that is the method. Very simple, very, very simple in Kali Yoga. He made it so easy for me. Yes, and then he says, Madan right? Just remember me, right? We don't need to do anything else. Just remember him. So if we're serious, that's the method. Uh, sometimes we invest money and we always look for the biggest return on our investment. So in this Particular case, we're investing time in going back home, back to Godhead. So we need to think about what is the biggest return for that investment. And the biggest return for the investment is going back home, back to Godhead. And how do we get there? We have to put that investment to work. And that investment, that work is constantly remembering Krishna. And Srila Prabhupada gave us a method to remember during the day, we're conscious, we can remember very easily. When we're sleeping, we're basically unconscious. Somebody comes in your room, pick up something or put something down, we, will ne we don't know because we're unconscious. But he said, if we read about Krishna before we go to bed, we will dream about Krishna. And because Lord Krishna's form is non-different than Lord Krishna himself, when we dream about Lord Krishna, we're associated with Lord Krishna. So who doesn't want to associate with Lord Krishna? So we can associate with him during the day because he's invested in Kali Yoga. He's invested all of his energy in his name. So by saying Krishna, Krishna is here. We might not be able to see him with these two material or these four material eyes, but nevertheless, you know, two and two. So nevertheless, he is here. So if we want to see Krishna face to face all the time, then we chant his holy name, we think of him, we serve his devotees, we serve him, and hopefully at the time of death, like Ajamil, who unconsciously called Narayan, when he meant his son, he didn't mean Lord Narayan, but the Lord hears, right? It doesn't matter where he is, he can hear. And he immediately sent two Vishnu Dutas to come and get him. 
Vishnu Dutas have four arms. They look, they have blue body. They look just like Lord Vishnu. Every living entity in a spiritual world looks exactly like Lord Vishnu. Uh, when we die, if we happen to go back there, we will regain, Prabhupada said we will regain our spiritual body, which is blue, four arms, just like Lord Vishnu, except we don't carry Sanchakra Pada, Padma, Padma Gada. We'll just be carrying a Padma. So those two Vishnu Dutas came with a Viman, a flower airplane, and they escorted a Jamil to his next destination. But Lord Rishabdev tells um, uh, Mother Devahuti, sorry, not Rishabdev, Lord um, Kapila told Mother Devahuti that um, if the soul doesn't go back home, back to Godhead, it gets arrested by Yamadutas who then drag us who would drag that soul, which is called a parit. It's like big, big like a thumb. And drag it through different grades of hell. Where uh, one place you walk bare feet on a road. There's forest fires burning on each side like Quebec. And there's a hot sun beating down from above. Just imagine if you go to the beach. Sometimes in the summertime you go to the beach. It's a hot day. And you take your, so your, your, your shoe off. How hot that sand is, that's nothing compared to hell. <laughs> that's just the sun on top beating down a little bit. But there's the sun is beating down, forest fire, uh, fires are burning on both sides, and you have to walk. And then you go through coal hells, hot hell, you know, to get to where Yamaraj is, so he can have Chitragupta, Chitragupta read out all our offenses that we forgot all about. He doesn't forget them. He keeps them there. So thank you very much. So again, if you one last thing, if you one thing you remember from today is chanting the names of the Lord. If we want to go to Goloka Vrindavan, but if you want to stay here, then you don't need to do anything. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Put the blood. Yeah, it's just a gun. It's just a gun. It's just a gun.